All right, welcome to Catalyst Circle V2 meeting two. Uh, let's start with Matthias and then we'll go to Allison. Um, let's do a check in. All right, um, yeah, feeling good. Happy Thanksgiving again to all of you who celebrate, um, well, wish to celebrate. Um, feeling good, lots of things to report. It's been a very active two weeks. Um, but yeah, looking forward to today's meeting. From Allison and then Steven. Uh, yeah, I have well, echo the happy Thanksgiving. I'm actually feeling very thankful today. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but happy to be here. Thankful to be working with all of you. Lots going on. Thanks, thanks Alvin, Stephen, and then Megan. I'm thankful for the proposal cast off today. I'd have to submit any more proposals. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it seems to be never ending. And um, I've done all the KPA reports today. So, yeah. So in a good mood. Good. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Megan, and then Harris. Yep. Hi, everyone. Megan Hess. Um, I am joining in from Cameroon, so used to celebrating Thanksgiving, but not really celebrating this year. Um, and gearing into sort of a new phase of holidays and how that looks. So that's always um, fun. I'm also feeling a sigh of relief that the proposal submission is over. For sure. Thanks, Megan. Um, Harris and then Raymond. Hi, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, definitely feeling very excited to be here. I, I feel the energy of these meetings and the fact that we can actually get something accomplished. Um, just super thankful for the opportunity to be part of this movement together with all of you. Uh, thankful for having some time to spend with family and Thanksgiving has definitely been a, a great tradition for me and my family and spending time with my, my mom and my grandmother. And I just really love this tradition of being together. So I'm just happy to be here. Thanks, uh, Raymond and then Tivo. Hey everyone! I'm excited, excited to be here. It's been a it's been a wild month. Um, I'm away from my family right now. I'm with my dad in El Paso, Texas. Um, been traveling a lot. I spent most of my time on the islands these last few weeks, uh, and now I'm just here giving my dad some company. My sister's actually here as well, so we get to have a, a little bit of a family feel here as well. Um, checking in, um, just feeling um, ready. A little scattered, a little overwhelmed. Um, but ready to, to jump in for this with you guys and, uh, and also celebrate this time together today. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Tivo. And then we can hear from JP. Yeah, I'm calling in uh, from uh, Berlin in a hostel room here. I have a jacket on because it's a bit, um, it's a bit cold. I turned up the heaters and, but my brain is frisky. I'm ready to roll. And in the sleep, I see proposals. This this week has been crazy. People want a lot of help. And then I realized, oh, damn, I haven't done any proposal myself. So <laughs> in, in a hectic one. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tivo. Uh, JP, do you want to do a quick check-in since you're here as secretary? Sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans. Um, up here in Canada, we had it last month. Uh, so I'm gonna keep my camera off. Uh, I got some neck uh, issues going on. So I got the heating pad on it. Save you guys the mess that is my, my webcam right now. <laughs> so uh, just here to take notes. Um, please, if I take anything that uh, is not worded correctly or you want it phrased a different way, uh, you can either do it or just let me send me a message or let me know and I'll make sure to reflect it accurately. Thanks everyone. Awesome, thank you, Jonathan. Um, and I'm super happy to be here, super excited for Circle V2. And um, yeah, happy to be here with you all. And thanks for all the Americans who joined us, um, sacrificing a bit of time on their Thanksgiving and taking some time from their family. It's super appreciated. And thanks, Megan, for joining us. Um, I think that's super awesome that we're able to fill in when people can't attend. So um, I think that's a, a huge change from last time where people just didn't show up. And I think this will be a huge boost to our continuity and being able to keep moving forward. So I really love to see it. I really love seeing how this is evolving. Um, all right, we can jump into the announcement sections. Does anybody have any announcements? This is generally a section just for anything that's 
really short, doesn't really require some discussion, but if you want to announce an event coming up or um, anything like that, this would be an appropriate place. Um, and I'll just let the silence hang for a few seconds and then move on if nobody's got anything. All right. Um, and then we can take a look at the agenda um, and make sure that everyone's happy with it. Um, we're going to start with a circle stand up, which is basically, I'll explain it when we get to that point, but it's really just a stand up where we take turns going around really quick and doing a agile scrum style update on what's going on. Um, and then we have the main body of the meeting, which is the consent agenda. Um, so it looks like we'll start with Harris to talk about catalyst parameters governance process, and then moving to the Cardano governance oversight and improvements, sharing some fun six community feedback. Um, and then there's a topic for KPI reporting for CC funded proposals. Uh, we do have one proposal called Power of the Catalyst Circle that has been funded. It needed a KPI report submitted and it kind of fell through the cracks and there was nobody actually tasked to do that because the first circle is now retired. You guys came in and didn't really know and the admin team didn't really know either. Um, there was nothing, the proposal was put in but no process was uh, defined around it. So this topic is here so we can figure out what that process is. So we make sure we know what the KPIs are and how we can proceed. Um, we have another topic for proposal submissions. Um, whether we want to do it as individuals or as Catalyst Circle B2. Um, and then Catalyst Coordinator Representative Proposals to talk about um, and challenge settings re relevant to the circle. A lot of fun seven stuff. That's awesome. Um, possible alternative to the inaccessible Catalyst Prioritized Problems Trello board. Um, and I know that Stephen set up a, a GitHub organization and a board there. So that'll be really interesting to discuss that. Um, and then TiVo has a mapping catalyst ecosystem tools topic. Um, oh, and then uh, circle members, how should we expand the circle? Um, and that'll take us through to the end of the meeting. Um, do those all sound good to everybody? Is there anything somebody wants to add or remove, edit? Um, yeah, I, I certainly could take out a topic if I've added too much. Happy to uh, shift things around if we want to prioritize other things first. Is there anything? To me. Yeah, I think, I think it looks good. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so let's just take it step by step through the agenda. Um, so let's kick, in, kick off the circle stand up. Um, the purpose of the standup is just to do a quick check-in and really if someone's blocked, the key goal is to unblock you if someone else in the circle can help. Um, so there are three questions to focus on and answer really quickly as you go around is what did you work on since the last meeting um, that's relevant to the circle? What will you work on before the next meeting? Um, so one is that, um, past looking, the other one is forward looking. And then the last one is anything blocking you. Do you need help from the group? So if there's anything that um, someone else on the circle can help you with, it's a good opportunity to, to figure that out. Um, it's not a time for conversations or discussions. So if something does pop up and you wanna talk about it, we can either append it to the agenda or you can take it offline. So it's not really a time for back and forth. It's just a time for a go around in a circle. Um, so we'll kick it off. We'll do it in the same order. We'll start with um, Matthias and go to Allison next. All right. All right. Uh, first question, what did I work on since last meeting? Um, of course, we got the problem statement from CF, right, which was announced in a town hall uh, last week. Um, and uh, regarding the catalyst and the catalyst circle, I talked to the head of partnerships last night, um, Jeremy. And uh, we're engaged in a lot of conversation in the ambassador's guild. And there we found further areas of improvement, uh, which I will not get into right now. Um, what I'll work on is, um, so next Monday, I'll finally have my uh, meeting with uh, Frederick, the CEO of the Cardano Foundation. And um, we keep on checking in with the, regular, uh, with the ambassador's guild on a regular schedule. 
in terms of not really blocking me, but um, what I want to put out where I could help, uh, need some help. Of course, the, div um, the distributed governance, uh, that proposal is on the agenda. So that needs some work. Uh, right now it's a placeholder, apologies. Um, but then there's also potentially two other proposals regarding cloud credits and a developer ecosystem that I want to point out. Um, developer ecosystem, of course, fund aid challenge setting. And um, just want to point out that there's uh, the, the need to kind of work towards some cloud credits kind of incubator stuff. Um, if anyone wants to partner with me on that, that would be great. All right, Allison and then Stephen. Um, so what I have been working on, a couple of different things. Um, just <laughs> today, there was some funny conversation about how I was elected on Twitter, which I was actually very amused by, but there, it became a big topic of conversation. Who is this Allison from and who elected her? Um, is, is, so I responded and I think there was, it was an identified a very good issue around perhaps improving the process for how the quote unquote general ADA holder is elected. I personally would like to see um, the voter base be much broader since that this role is supposed to represent general ADA holders. There are a lot of them, thankfully. Um, so just staying on that, maybe I'll stay on that topic. What I, I know um, Victor also put in a proposal. It's sort of a, an interesting innovation. And I know there, you know, there's a lot of discussion there, but there's a proposal, a challenge out there actually around electing the general ADA holder, um, which I think is very interesting and innovative and could work, but certainly would like to have more discussion with this group um, on that topic. Um, one of the connected things that I'm working on before the next meeting, I'm, I'm sort of playing with this idea of holding office hours for anybody who wants to talk with me about um, general ADA holder voting issue or general ADA holder catalyst issues. Um, I could definitely use some help with that, both just logistically and communication wise, but then also specifically what I'm wrestling with. It's great. I'm actually really happy and, and very excited that people are coming from all over the place to give me their feedback. Um, and so I need to set up a way to um, track these various things that I'm hearing and, and organize it and, and make it um, actionable, basically. So I'm starting to think about how to do that. And I'm playing with ideas around maybe I just set up a, a channel in our Slack workspace where I start to dump things and organize them around topics. Um, but if anyone has ideas for better uh, tools or organization, I am I'm all ears. Um, the other thing that I've been working on, which is kind of a funny organic development that I love, I'm, I'm in the PRISM Pioneers program and somehow um, Tony Rose, who's the product manager, realized that I had catalyst expertise or expertise being a <laughs> loosely used term here. Um, and he really wants more prison pioneers to be involved with Catalyst. So I've been um, building a bridge between Catalyst and the Pioneers program, which is fantastic. Um, one thing that came up, which I don't know if this is the right place to raise, but it was an in interesting thing that came out of that work around the lobbying challenge which somebody who is a lobbyist in the US and has a really cool proposal in that lobbying challenge pointed out that it's a big deal for a company to sponsor lobbyists in a foreign country. And I know that I'm sure IOG, IOHK has reviewed the legalities of dispersing money. I'm not sure if even it's IOHK who's technically legally responsible for dispersing the funds from the Cardano treasury, but that particular challenge in general, I just wanted to highlight it. I don't maybe specifically for you, Harris, that if nobody has looked at that and the legal implications of sending lobbyists, of, of funding lobbyists in 
quote unquote foreign countries, if IOHK is seen as a US country, I, US entity, I mean, I don't know the legalities, but I wanted to highlight it as perhaps something to check on if it hasn't already been thoroughly researched. Uh, and I think that's it for me at the moment. Is there anything blocking you? Oh, um, well, I, yeah, I mean, I could use better organizational structures and I could use, I could use help with better organizational structures and I could use more support around helping me to, to get a core team of general ADA holders, which Nori, I know you're already very much helping me with and I'm, I'm grateful. So I guess I'll just highlight that I'm looking forward to that support to help me find some more hours in, in the day. Thank you. Um... Stephen and then Megan. Yeah, I, I, I cheated and <laughs> did some notes beforehand. Um, yeah, so yeah, what have I done? I set up a capitalist coordinated Git book. I announced as a town hall and began uh, building a uh, GitHub issue management tool for problem sensing to try and uh, problem sense the funded cohort process. I shared the coordinated email at town hall. I haven't received any yet. Uh, I can live in hope. Um, I booked a Gimbal Labs playground for round table on funded cohort, the problem that's on the board, almost non-existing collaborative layer, layer with James, uh, which is going to be held on Tuesday, the 11th of January next year. Um, and I began a book for the challenge teams by popular demand because they wanted an aggregation of all the challenge um, settings. So I'm still working on that. And I resubmitted the improve and grow audibility F fund eight challenge. So they're the kind of, they're the kind of headlines. Um, what I'm working on next is um, refining a lot of these proposals that we're going to discuss in this meeting and other proposals, my own proposals, there's lots of proposals. Um, audibility issues I'm going to be addressing, um, refining the coordinator problem sensing, which I've just mentioned, um, and also continuing to work on the challenge team aggregation. Um, what's blocking me, not much. I'm handing over, exists a lot of some more existing fund six proposals I've got funded to um, other people so I can work more with circle stuff um, and I'm meeting with someone tonight uh, to hand over my open source training proposal. So that's it. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Megan and then Harris. Okay, I feel a little bit unprepared for this question. Um, I'm uh, here representing Kenrick he didn't have anything specific to for me to report from him. Um, so I know, for example, though, that he has been working to submit um, project a project for fund seven around governance. I'm not sure if that directly applies here. Um, and I will say, I think something that has been blocking him, he's been quite busy. Um, but he's hoping that after this weekend, it clears up a bit. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here today representing him. Okay. Thank you very much, Megan. I, I hope that worked. Yep. Um, okay, Harris and then Raymond. Great. Yeah, I've been spending a, an awful lot of time actually working on roadmap items really related to, to Catalyst and uh, helping to kind of set the next, you know, six, 12 months of what, what we want to try to accomplish within IOG. Um, you know, a lot of that, that push is trying to find ways to change from being a, you know, the custodian of Catalyst to actually uh, handing it into, into the community more and more, uh, trying to identify ways of, of doing that. Uh, part of how we can do that experimentation is through pilots. And so I've been doing a lot of, uh, of work in terms of trying to define ideas for pilots. And uh, today I'll be presenting one of the potential pilots looking for the circles feedback. Um, there's some additional pilots that I will want to 
kind of uh, work on as well. I also processed some feedback from the community. And I do think that we uh, really should align on, you know, how we're processing feedback. We have some proposals in mind of uh, maybe handing that feedback processing uh, off of IOG and uh, have the community help to manage that uh, specifically. So there's uh, definitely a lot been going on, been very busy in, in processing that. Um, Allison, thank you so much for highlighting that that point for the legal perspective for lobbying. Um, I, I can take an action to, to follow up on that. Um, but excited to continue uh, the roadmap discussions and where, where we're going to be heading. And that's uh, a lot of what I'm going to be focused on uh, moving forward. anything blocking you Harris or do you need help from anyone um no no blockers at this time Thanks. uh Raymond and then Tiva hey guys um so I spent most of my time since the last meeting um you could say problem sensing or really getting a feel for the perception that state poor operators in general have about Catalyst um, and so for me, that looks like getting into my groups that I'm a part of, um, where there are a, a medley of different kinds of operators. There's a lot of small state pool operators. There's also large, very successful state pool operators as well. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm building a reputation, I guess you could say, amongst these communities, um, not only for myself and representing Catalyst Circle, but also for um, seeing what kind of reputation Catalyst has with SPOs um, and getting at what is blocking them from participating more in this ecosystem. So I feel like I have a very good sense of what that is now. Um, and it's, it's a big challenge. Um, and at the same time, it's not impossible. Um, it's really gonna be about education and engagement consistent education and engagement um, for that community. I was happy to see that a number of SPOs did take up their, the challenges. I saw a number of good proposals um, in uh, Fund 7 for those SPO challenges. Um, specifically, there is one by uh, Stoic Pool, uh, the staking DAO that he's working on, uh, bringing into uh, that proposal system. That was really exciting to see. Um, I also got to meet with a few SPOs that are already um, community advisors and are starting to hold um, forums of their own, like Twitter spaces and other things like that, to get the discussions going and to get a feedback cycle, go, a feedback loop going for what's happening in the proposal space. So that's where I'm at. So my next step really is to, um, at this point, kind of shift gears now that the proposal window is closed. Um, is to shift gears over into getting the SPO community into the CA process as much as possible. So it's about education and awareness at this point. Um, I think what's blocking me really, um, if anything, is I have been a little busy. I've been moving around a lot. I've been on the islands, moving around from island to island, um, Ashland, Oregon, I'm all, now I'm in El Paso, and this is all within the last 30 days. Um, so that movement is it kind of slows me down a little bit, but I'm creative. I know I have two different mobile phones and a laptop and, and I, I can stay connected and, and, and in communication with everybody. <laughs> sometimes that's on the toilet. Sometimes that's while I'm waiting for the microwave dinner to finish, you know, whatever. Um, it gets done. Uh, I'm just, I'm not moving quite as quickly as I do when I have my four panel monitors in front of me. <laughs> so I, I expect that to kind of ramp up over the next few weeks. I'll be here with my dad probably uh, till maybe the middle of December. And then I'll be back in Ashland um, after that. And I'm pretty well uh, set up here with my dad, actually. He's, he's a technology enthusiast himself. So I, I actually expect to catch up and speed up while I'm here because I'm so isolated. I don't have my family around me uh, and a bunch of other things. So I get to kind of really focus on these kinds of things more. All right. Thanks, Raymond. Um, Tivo. Um, so most of the things, uh, what I'm known on is mini proposal workshops. So I have several of them, a um, few, two of them in uh, sustainability quals event. 
and then had several uh, workshops how to introduce people to Catalyst in Easter Town Hall, one uh, private session with Vada, uh, and then I had a, a very interesting opportunity to speak to Taltec University magister students who learn like learn uh, uh, IT business IT or something, and uh, then in that meeting there was uh, uh, also a person who who had a lot of knowledge about crowdfunding for parliament, not crowdfunding, but uh, like grants and uh, for governments and and parliament, and he was very interested in the way the um, the, the way the catalyst is working. So uh, regarding this, there will be next week or in two weeks more follow up with uh, him and uh, we'll look forward if he actually put any proposals in or what his long term plans are. Um, so yeah, I hope right now, uh, I guess that that is most of the main ones to to modern no, should be notified. What is blocking me? Um, uh, what to do? I, I think the rest of the actions, what to, should be taken, I think it will um, emerge from the ongoing meeting will we have um, from the agendas. But the one, I don't know, it's, it's not really a blocking thing, but uh, more clarity of uh, Slack users because uh, with with the agenda of uh, like tooling the like the idea of should we uh, find uh, information of uh, what kind of tools we use from uh, community the idea was that I, I to get some kind of like confirmation that yeah okay let's do it and then i take an action but uh, i i don't i don't know should i speak everybody individually or or is it enough if i post something in a slack I, I ask i ask like a confirmation and that that would be enough and, and so this is like the the coordination is, is a slightly blocking thing for me but uh, but I, I think it's over time will be, be clarified or or is it something that we we do these kinds of like um task divisions in only in these catalyst circles and not outside of it Um, I think that Slack should be used to have offline co conversations because we only meet once every two weeks and we shouldn't wait if something is, especially if it's urgent or needs to move quickly. So definitely do use Slack to coordinate and ask people questions. Um, and the admin team will be using Slack to follow up on action items and things like that and to remind people and to work on agendas and things. So. I would encourage you to also jump in if you need to talk with the other circle members and use it as a tool. It's a tall tech with T, not C. Yes. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, uh, for the stand up. Uh, we'll move into the consent agenda um, and we'll kick it off with Harris um, Catalyst Parameters governance process. Great. Um, I do have some items to share. Um, is it possible to share my screen? Yep. Great. All right. So hopefully you can see my screen OK. I will get started here. Love the quote. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a chemist sort of by trade. And so it's, uh, it's always interesting to sort of see famous quotes. Uh, we do need a lot of ideas just to kind of keep things spurring, uh, keep, keep things fresh and lively for sure. And that's why I love Catalyst and sort of what we're doing here together, which is awesome. So I'll get right into it. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at several uh, different parts of Cardano as a whole, um, you know, my focus, and I, I think the circle's focus is, is to look at Catalyst and, and improve Catalyst as an innovation engine and, and really supporting the ecosystem and, and what we need to accomplish together. And one of the places to start is 
is looking at uh, the parameters related to uh, how Catalyst is adding influence, how funds are being spent, uh, dates. Uh, there's a whole set of things that, you know, really we've been tracking since the inception of, of Catalyst. And we want to look at ways to sort of have people outside of IoT uh, to help influence and help drive that and work on a set of iterations to do that. Uh, so the <clears throat> um, I'm proposing to start with a pilot and this is gonna involve the circle. It'll involve uh, another potential governing body, which I'll propose here today. And uh, we can kind of check that out and have some discussion uh, on that and deliberate. Um, so the idea is that you know, we want to decentralize the governance process, um, and we can do that with some of the parameters that we've been using so far. Uh, a lot of this is a very manual process. There's been a lot of just sort of ad hoc decisions on specific things, and we want to actually iterate more and more and, can, and have the control of these parameter settings um, to be handed off to the catalyst circle potentially uh, as uh, you know, not only receiving kind of the signals of what's happening in the in the community but moving towards uh, decision making body uh, as well as the creation of what we're just calling the catalyst expert council and making sure all along the way we have community visibility and input so today uh, right now with input output and our researchers in the background, we sort of decide on specific parameters. And again, those parameters can be you know, voting power threshold, voter rewards, advisor rewards, and really on a fund by fund sort of cadence. And each fund is essentially a release, uh, if you will, is sort of how we kind of think of it. And we can make adjustments, we can try things, we can see the signals in, in terms of the feedback we're actually getting from, from the community uh, using some of the, the forms and the surveys that we've been sending out and processing. And, and that's one mechanism to sort of understand how are we doing. Uh, so there can be other mechanisms. Uh, I know that we're looking at sending out additional feedback forms, but it should be part of the signal so we know when there's a problem, something's working or not working and we can adjust parameters, we can adjust incentive, we can adjust lots of these different pieces uh, of things. So for instance, you know, the amount uh, you know, it, that goes into challenge settings, for instance, fund over fund, you know, we started kind of rocky, we started defining these parameters and uh, now we're you know, sort of at a stage where some of the parameters are just sort of set and we're, we're sort of arbitrarily making some decisions within IOG to, to move them up or down. Uh, and we want to open that up. So the desired state is to open some of the parameter setting to Catalyst Circle, and then also create a new body known as the Catalyst Expert Council to help co-define what these parameters may be. And again, bringing in specific, you know, experts with experts in catalysts, uh, researchers to try to, to bring these things together uh, and then take advantage of the existing processes that we have and knowledge and through a series of pilots, you know, iterate in each of these funds as releases to, uh, you know, have, have the community drive and, and some of the folks that are, are voted in uh, to drive some of the decision-making on these things. So that's sort of the, the current state and the desired state and catalyst specific parameters. And there's definitely a need to sort of separate catalyst from sort of the innovation engine that we're, we're helping to drive from Cardano itself, which is in how we speak about it is sort of Voltaire and the Voltaire era and the actual protocol specific mechanism. So it's important to kind of keep sort of a clear separation. And so our focus is on, on Catalyst specifically to spur innovation. So uh, the, yes. Can, can I ask questions or are you, uh, yeah. you want to hold questions until the end? Um, we, we definitely, uh, I 
have some content to cover. I do want to sort of try to keep to the time, but uh, feel free to to interject. Okay, no, I'll. I'll... Okay, because we do want to. I do want to have this as a deliberation and actually have an opportunity for feedback. And we may decide that this should become a working session um, outside of this meeting. Um, but is there a quick question I, I can address? Also? No, no, I'll I'll hold, I'll hold my okay, questions. Cool. All right, thank you. So. Uh, as a process, there's several things that we are really wanting to look at to ensure that we're doing things in the right way. Um, and I'm going to walk through kind of a process here in just a second. But you know, the introduction of this concept of the Catalyst Expert Council, um, you know, having a second governing body of people to help decide or veto a specific idea, or um, you know check and make sure that we're going the right direction and bringing in the research these kinds of things are are, are something that um, you know we're thinking is is good to bring to the table so we have more than just one group making decisions um, and so the callous expert council uh, we're proposing that uh, door would be part of that uh, kevin hammond uh, who is very instrumental in in cardano as a whole uh, and Roman, who is one of our researchers that's published a number of papers and has some background on the governance process and can also help us in terms of validating security. So we're not uh, having up, you know, places where we're trying to uh, create an incentive that's subject to attack or manipulation. Uh, so it, with the, this initial set of people is sort of what is being proposed. Um, as an appointed set of group uh, of folks, uh, we would have them added into a potential flow to help make some of these decisions, at least initially. So appointed initially and then elected over time, but that creates uh, a future vision of what we're what we're wanting, which is this bicameral two-body governance set of structures to help check and balance what's happening. And the Catalyst Expert Council is not meeting on a regular basis. And so uh, hence some of the proposal suggestions for expanding the role of admins and facilitators to you know, uh, add a bit more of the things that, that the team is already doing in supporting the Catalyst Circle, but expanding that into, uh, into the, um, the Catalyst Expert Council, or I wanna call it the CEC. <laughs> um, but the idea is that you know, we would just have these two bodies, but supported by pro, uh, different processes, different meetings, different organization, um, but then have the opportunity to vote. Questions so far before I jump into sort of a flow of how this might work? I mean, I have tons of questions, but I think maybe I better hold them and let you finish the presentation part first. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the catalyst uh, parameters governance process. So this is something that I've worked out in Miro and it's essentially swim lanes of the various uh, folks that are involved. So right now uh, the catalyst team is sending out a feedback form. We get feedback and ideally we would see clear signals that, hey, a process isn't working. And I'll show some of the actual data that we got for feedback. Uh, but uh, that information is you know, shared uh, with the, you know, the communities giving us feedback. We receive that feedback, process that feedback uh, within the circle, potentially we could deliberate that feedback, which we're gonna start a little bit of that today. Um, and then we can generate a proposal for how do, we, how do we make it better? How do we make it right? Receiving those signals, receiving that input and feedback. That information can be uh, shared and collaborated with uh, the Catalyst Expert Council feedback back and forth to the community from these people and the circle itself and in our various groups, um, proposing a potential change <clears throat> uh, to an incentive parameter or an amount of funds, uh, you know, challenge focus. Uh, these things can be decided by these governing bodies. Um, and we, you know, again, with input clearly from, from the community. Uh, deliberate that feedback and then uh, suggest the parameter change. And the parameter change is also shared again with the community. And then the catalyst parameter can be put to a vote. And the vote would happen during uh, our official meeting, potentially. 
and we need to decide how that process should be. And you know, I think how we were elected this last round, uh, you know, maybe an example, we may use some advanced technology to do that. But our objective is to try to have the decision power to be handed off to folks outside of IOG uh, sooner than later. And the bodies themselves can decide how technology might be evoked to make specific decisions. But in, uh, in light of trying to have the decision power handed sooner than later, uh, we could have the Catalyst Circle and the Catalyst Expert Council vote. That official vote might be a uh, you know, show of hands in a Zoom meeting. It might be a Google form. It might be something on the blockchain specifically. Uh, but uh, the idea is to keep it simple. And that would be an outcome. Change the parameter. Don't change the parameter. Yay or nay. Possibly abstain. These might be things that are, are, are done. Um, and then you know, we make a decision to change the parameter. Today, you know, if there is a decision on the parameter right now, processing that parameter change is sort of an eternal IOG process. Um, you know, that can change in the future, but the idea is that we would eventually work toward automation, work towards other things, but we don't want to necessarily build all of that capability before handing the ideas, um, the, the decision-making to people outside of IOG. So that's sort of a overview of a specific governance process as it relates to catalyst parameters. And there's other processes that we're looking to, to introduce. Um, so that, that's this topic of about 10 minutes. And before I sort of jump into other, other areas, maybe we can take questions. And I think I'm probably close to the, the 10 minute mark or over already, but um, I do want to have this as an opportunity for deliberation. So please. And then I know Allison has questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the question that I have, why not include the community now? And I'm asking this because I know that some longtime ambassadors and also SPOs um, that read their article three days ago, slow and steady wins the race, uh, didn't sit well. You know, it was just about block size. I mean, I say just block size, but we know what happens in Bitcoin when block size gets changed. Uh, and the because the perception really is that IoT makes these important decisions alone without even discussing these changes. So why not now? Um, <clears throat> in uh, in terms of setting like parameters. voting, voting yeah. process or yeah, because because right now it is you know we had the um and i'm sure raymond knows historically more accurate um how things were but you know there was a pioneers program uh for spos essentially right mm -hmm. and from what i gathered is that the perception was like okay they were kind of like the guinea pigs and while there were discussions in the past those were not and I'm just reporting on this, those were not uh, considered. And hmm. with this move, the perception really is that IOG does their own thing again. I mean, it's great that I can report, hey, you know, there's a move towards that, right? But the, the question really is why, why not now? Because there are technical capable people outside of IOG as well. Sure, that was certainly a valid, a valid point. Um, so we, we do want to uh, you know, transfer the, the decision-making power uh, quickly, right? Uh, and so we are certainly open to suggestions and, and a process of doing that. We also don't want to disrupt the entire ecosystem in the process of doing that as well, because you know there certainly can be uh, influences. You know, if we're talking a lot of money, there certainly can be uh, individuals trying to game the system. And you know, we're definitely sensitive to that. And so we, we need to think, okay, what, what is the, the best way to do this transition? Right now, iteratively, we think is a good way to do it. And again, we want to have the, the actual decision-making happen outside of IOG as quick as possible. And each of us as sort of members of Catalyst Circle representing individual groups is a potential way to have, have that input. The expert council certainly 
we want to have these these pieces in place but but we need to make definitions like who is an expert how are they qualified to be an expert who who's making the decision that they're an expert or not so there's a lot of places for for influence and and so that that is potentially why this would go slowly um we certainly want to find opportunities to have general votes uh, but you know the the process uh, we think needs to kind of evolve slowly and once all the decision is outside of iog's hands then you know the the bodies can make decisions on on when to make that that switch um you know and it, it would evolve from there and then you know we certainly will maintain our position on being a contributor and and, and you know providing our knowledge and expertise but we're not the, necessarily the ones someone's driving it so that's a bit of a, a of an answer but this is sort of based on our our research and you know some of the experts we're consulting uh is a, a path forward but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the path like there's and just for clarity for this conversation we're talking about catalyst parameters which are things like that would affect cas and voting and proposals and funding and we're not talking about block size or k values or any of those kind of things right? exactly yeah thank you for clarifying that nori um then then i have a follow-up question is that for up for debate because i mean long term yes but will that happen sooner than later as well with k values and block size and whatnot yes uh so so that, that'll be part of the uh voltaire governance processes which is also being defined and but that's but that is separate from catalyst now we can actually experiment and do these things within the catalyst innovation engine to try things that will support future voting for voltaire and that's sort of the intent that we are the innovation piece of things and we can actually iterate you know, try things, establish processes that will feed into the future of Cardano governance. And that's that's part of the intent and, and why I'm working very closely with, you know, uh, the, the team that's working on Voltaire directly. But this is, again, focused on Catalyst, as Nori pointed out. Um, so yeah, th those, those things are very much top of mind. We know that the community will want to have influence over that and we want to find ways to to help them change the k value or the blocks block size those kinds of things we certainly know that's certainly very high priority okay thank you Sorry. um just before we go to tivo yeah, i just want to check in with allison to see if you want to jump the queue because i know you have thanks. questions thanks i yeah i wasn't sure if i should raise my hand again or uh, you know raise my hand visually as well as vocally um anyway <laughs> Please. So my first reaction, I think my head was in the same place as Matthias when I saw the Catalyst Expert Council and the three senior IOG people who were on it. Looking at your SWIM chart, it actually makes me, it, it resolved some of my concerns because I absolutely see the value of expert research when it comes to things like game theory and civil attacks and lots of money. I mean, I see all the manipulation in games that, that, that people are playing with, you know, writing CA proposals and, you know, the things that you could do to try to manipulate the system. And certainly those are things I would want expert help on. So that said, my one suggestion, well, one suggestion, one question. Number one, would you consider changing the name of the body to something that makes it clear that it's they're playing a research and advisory role rather than making a IOG governance body that's essentially, it, it looks like it's a separate governance arm, government arm, but it's just IOG. That's, that's what was the first impression, that it's calling something governance, but it's actually just IOG making the decision. So that would be a suggestion, make it clear that it's drawing on the research and advisory capabilities of the experts within IOG. My, and, but then my question, the fundamental question is, you mentioned checks and balances, but who has the power here? 
So if the catalyst circle votes yes, and the expert council votes no, how is that resolved? We, we get to define that. <laughs> <laughs> because that, that to me is the critical, um, sure. a, a critical step. And actually it's just funny drawing on this whole, you know, this Twitter thing today was pretty minor. But I, I think that the work that we're, we're all doing or a number of people are doing around governance of how the catalyst circle itself is elected becomes even more critical and will have even more visibility and scrutiny once we are making decisions. And I think that's really important and, and the step that we should be moving towards. Certainly, certainly great, great points. <clears throat> um, we're certainly not attached to the expert council name if there's a, another name. Um, and I certainly, you know, as this was kind of discussed within IOG, I certainly had similar questions and, and you know, what is an expert? How, you know, how are they, they there? Um, but we, we do, so since we here in the circle represent, you know, SPOs and the general ADA holder, you know, we have specific uh, antenna sort of into the communities that we're, we're serving. And, you know, the, but we do need folks that know governance and processes and research and, and security and, and these kinds of things. So um, it, it's, it's, it's just a different view and that body can be bigger. It could be, you know, we could define what an expert is or we could call it something else entirely. Um, but this is sort of the initial proposal and the idea is that this is an experiment and we're going to try it. Um, you know, and, and I, you know, I recommend we try it yeah, as a pilot and sort of see where we're going to find those problems of, hey, now, now there's a disagreement between these two bodies. How do we resolve that and build governance uh, rules and process potentially to help support that? Uh, who's the tiebreaker, uh, these kinds of things. So that that is something that is not defined, not worked out, but we can experiment together. Maybe we should take some of these additional questions. Um, any any other uh, points? No, let's, Alex, uh, let's answer your question. Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. Let's do the, the last three hands, but then we need to move on because we're running over time. So um, if we do have questions okay. after, we can definitely chat offline on Slack or set up a, a face to face if that's important too. So Thibaut, then Raymond, and then Stephen can finish us off on this topic. Yeah, so I I love that the IOG is taking initiative to already starting handling this parameter changing. And I'm also wondering, is, is there a change for processes? Because in the community, there has been a, uh, quite a while that the process is too long, the, the feedback uh, like a uh, circle is, is not well like made or or not I, I don't or we don't actually understand why it is that we have to wait for feedback for so long because our funding cycle is like three months long so uh, i'm not going to go into details but is this also related to how this like weekly stages could be changed and how the roles in the catalyst process could be changed or this is only strictly related to the current process and parameters on top of that. Uh, uh, some of the parameters that we do have ha has to do with uh, sort of the time cycle. Um, and, you know, so right now we've started, we started trying to actually make the, the process short and found that people weren't spending enough time making decisions and we didn't have the processes in place on our side um, to support that adequately and so it ended up stretching into this approximately quarterly time frame that is today by experiment um, and so I, I certainly because this is essentially release by release our the idea is that we take learnings from from each cycle and move it into the next cycle make adjustments so we certainly need to give time for the community uh, to process all the proposals and and each of the phases and it's certainly a cadence that could be improved with automation and you know uh, things happening but we still need to keep keep that awareness and so it's certainly something that i i would love to speed up for sure um 
but we, you know, we evolved into this particular state. And the idea is that these governing groups can help influence that and make decisions on, okay, the funding data is this, the snapshot data is this. Um, and so these are part of the parameters uh, currently. So that's something we need to need to deliberate and discuss. Yeah, Raymond. Raymond. All right, my turn. Yes. Pretty quick. Um, really, actually, just an echo out with Allison. I, I, Allison's question has really kind of covered mine, I think. Um, the first thing that came to mind was the use of the word expert. Um, I would advise against that word. Um, I think that it, it will set up a perception um and will make it difficult for people to really feel like this is a fair process um there's probably some other word in there that could be used to to um make an example of what their input is going to be but not kind of put them in that class where their voice just ultimately seems like it's more important than all the other ones and that's what expert tends to do especially in a, in a community that's so science-based like the one we're in that's, that's my reflection there um, I like this this flow. Um, I like that it involves a community and has all these these feedback uh, loops that are happening. Um, I think the, the the next question, which was I think already answered, was is it hierarchical, right? Will the Catalyst Expert Council ultimately have the say? Which I, it, look, it sounds like what you said, Harris, is we that's that's yet to be determined as far as how that will function. So those are really my two reflections. Great. No, thank you for that. Um, yeah, a lot of this is sort of concepts and and the ideas that we we get to experiment for sure. Good on. Thank you. Hey, yeah, have, okay. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I have two points. Uh, one kind of re reiterates and it's been answered by Harris a little bit. Was the about the balance of power between the expert council and circle in the bicameral model who has the power of veto but uh, harris answered that already because that's up for discussion so um second expertise i think a possible solution to that is that is the concept of domain expertise so the there is a domain of expertise in iog which is research orientated and the output would be for example publishing papers for example, and there's a domain expertise of the Catalyst Circle, which is the community expertise, which is problem sensing and our network within the community. So we're both experts in that sense. What I'd like to see is outputs from these experts. So the domain expertise of the researchers, I'd like to see some, if, if there was a significant change that was being voted on, then the outputs from them would be something published maybe academically published. And if there was a domain expertise from the community, we would publish something or we would problem sense and come back. Um, but that may get around the expertise issue. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great to consider the, the outputs for sure. And um, yeah, there's certainly continuous ongoing research and papers being written uh, by the team at IOG and, and those folks with some of that domain expertise. And, you know, there's, there's no, <laughs> there's no exact model to, to leverage and, you know, use that. We can try things, we can see how that works, but we also get to invent uh, and, and maybe define something that's never been done before. And that research is definitely helpful. So yeah, I think output is definitely something we need to consider in all of this. Cool. All right. Um, if it's if it's okay, I, I can jump to a couple of additional slides that I had shifting subjects now. That's sure. Cool. Let's right. go to the next I hope, one. I hope the next ones are as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after sort of looking at this flow, uh, uh, you know, Dorn and I did some brainstorming on, okay, what are the implications and some of the proposals that that we suggested uh, sort of came out of that, that really detailed analysis of, of the process, right? In every governance process, we should actually go through scrutiny and make sure that it makes sense. Um, and there's a number of criteria that we're looking at sort of for each process. Um, so the, the proposals, which 
we can probably table for the future discussion, um, you know, was trying to, you know, how do we support this new governing body, you know, the Catalyst Council, um, you know, with additional scope, and then the introduction of, of another oversight type committee uh, that uh, I can go into a little bit more detail sort of next, and then the idea of this community funded information hub. So thank you everyone for jumping in and creating, you know, the stubs for those proposals and we'll need to kind of work through that. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that some of these proposals came out of that uh, work related to Catalyst parameters in that process. So um, shifting gears again, uh, slightly into this, this concept of you know, the Cardano governance oversight and improvements body, right? So this is a, another concept of a, of a new body. And this is part of the pr second proposal related to, you know, how do we have additional checks and balances of things? And so this introduces a new, another body that would make sure everyone's doing what they said they were going to do. And so some of what we're evaluating <clears throat> in is that we want to really make sure to include accountability and evolution of the system, supporting you know, a number of different values. Um, and so we want to have decentralized you know, custodianship over governance. We don't want things to become centralized. We need to make sure that our Cardano end users, they're, they're not disrupted. You know, these are the values sort of going into this. We want to make sure that we have voices from each of the functional groups. And this additional body can have oversight uh, and auditing of these two bo other bodies. <laughs> uh, so this is a proposal uh, that uh, DOOR is interested in, in helping to drive. And we can, you know, we have a, a placeholder, I think, in, um, you know, in idea scale now, and we can involve that uh, with some of these details. But for each process, the, these are the the things that we're looking at. We want to make sure that there's no uh, chance of adversarial capture. We want to make sure there's accountability and mechanisms to enforce that. Um, you know, those are in place. It's got to be understandable, easy to use. And, and you know, the concept of effective decision making, right? We have to have the right people, right data, methodologies, and the right rules and policies. So there's, there's a lot to unpack for every process potentially ensuring that it's transparent, making sure we have security and we thought through really where those civil attacks and things can actually happen, making sure that we have legitimate people representing folks uh, in leadership, stable governance, and then making sure that it's lively and, and moving and not doesn't become some crazy bureaucratic sort of uh, entity. And so th these are some of the the details that we want to look at for every every mechanism, every sort of process, governance process that, that we're, we're thinking about. And we took this scrutiny into that catalyst parameters. That, and again, that's where some of those proposal ideas came from. And this is another entity to ensure that we have this audit, auditability um, and uh, making sure we have you know, those pieces. And so what, what are the functions of this additional body? And this body wasn't even in my diagram. So that's potentially a place where uh, we can make adjustments, but to monitor that each of these other bodies are maintaining governance values. They can publish results and assessments to the general public, facilitate retrospectives, you know, track, you know, whether improvement actions have been taken and report back. So making sure that these folks, including the Catalyst Circle, are doing what we said we were going to do, and then escalating potentially to some additional process, <laughs> right? To to make sure that the improvement action, um, well, so if, if there is an action, not to to find a way to escalate that. So that's a this additional governance um, body that. Uh, you know, has been proposed and that will be baked into that proposal within uh, the process and voted on by, by the community. So that's, uh, that was it on, on 
that topic. So looking at the proposals, looking at the details here, and again, I know I'm over time, uh, perhaps I can, I can maybe cut uh, the community feedback for today's session, uh, but questions on the governance oversight concept and that future proposal. Looks like Allison got her hand up. I love to ask questions. Yeah. Um, and, and my first one, this, I have to admit, I'm a little puzzled. It seems to me that there's so much activity in the community doing all of these things already. Would this not duplicate things that are already ha already happening? Um, yeah, the, the intention is to not duplicate it, and maybe you know there's a quick alignment that can happen. You know, so the the idea is to work to refine that in the proposal itself. Um, so certainly, you know, there's not no intention to to duplicate, um, but to ensure that the process you know, is, you know, that, that there is additional oversight. Again, we're not trying to create so much overhead, but the, the mechanisms, every time you introduce a new actor to the system, how do you verify them, right? And I know that accountability is something that many people are looking at, and I agree with you. Um, so we need to find a, you know, where the right place is for something like this. So right now, this is just a proposal. And the idea is, where does this, this is a, this is a group of people who mm -hmm. are elected somehow? Yeah, that gets to be decided. But, but the, these are essentially uh, a body intended for accountability of both of these other governing groups. That's the idea. Uh, it, there's a lot to unpack here. So I, I'm bringing a lot of content and I'm more than happy to schedule a separate breakout discussion on this. It, my, I mean, my initial reaction is that this would be a whole lot to implement quickly. And my, my fear is that this creates a lot, a lot of what you just said, bureaucracy and overhead, and in many ways is duplicative of the actions that are, are happening organically within the community to it, it exactly require accountability and oversight of the, of the catalyst circle. I mean, I, I you know, I, I see a lot of, activity in, in exactly those areas. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Sure. Yeah, so Steven has a lot to comment on the topic from the QA downside. Yeah, please. Steven. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you for your comments, Allison. Yeah, I kind of can see where Allison's coming from. Um, but that may be a problem with the proposal rather than the concept. I see that there's oversight and improvement. So it seems to almost like a combination of a Cardano improvement process and audit and oversight. So there needs to be a kind of distinction between those two concepts. So not improvements because the, imp the improvements process seems to be more about the expert council. So is this about improvements? Is it more about audibility and oversight rather than a legislative body for submitting improvements, which is more like the expert council? And that would help with the scoping of the proposal. Um, as to who could come together, it seems to be, well, you seem to be saying it's, or it's like a community led proposal so and the only way i can see that happening is through because there's existing initiatives across the network is is that network collaboration so the proposal proposes to seek out people in the community already who are already working on these things and bring them together to do a solution that's one possible scope inside of this proposal and also cardano this is catalyst not cardano is it, or are we, are we talking about oversight of things that go on within Project Catalyst only, or are we talking about everything, Cardano, Volatair? Yeah, I, I think it can, 
uh, you know, the, the, the concept is more tied to auditability. Um, I think this is sort of in that, that theme uh, of making sure that, you know, the circle members, council members are, are held accountable, that there's verification that specific things are done. Um, and, you know, this can be a group and, and that, that group gets to be defined, um, you know, how, you know, that, that's the proposal that, that gets to be defined. And, and maybe there are groups that exist already that would do that uh, from the auditability perspective. Um, so if, if something is going wrong, right, um, you know, if it's something specific with one of our, our groups, um, then you know, that can be highlighted, that can be fixed. But if, if the governance itself has problems, uh, we want to make sure that there's accountability. And if, if things are going well, then great. If things are not going well, then that, you know, the person can be removed from that position. Right. And so this, the role of this is to have oversight of the governance processes itself. And that would apply to Catalyst and likely to Voltaire and Cardano in the future. Yeah, I mean, if it's orientated towards audibility, there's already an audit circle that meets and is starting to meet with IOG as well. Um, and there's also, of course, the audibility challenge team. So I suppose that's the network I'm thinking of, Harris. Mm -hmm. But rather than going to an in-depth discussion here, as you say, it might be better to take this into a separate working meeting. Um, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the concept is get the proposal out there. It sounds like there's definitely already lots of activity in this in this area um and and they should we should definitely align those those initiatives for sure so this is a highlight of the of the details we're looking at it at the processes and again you know there's, there's a lot of detail here to unpack but these these are the things that we're considering um so that we're not breaking things that we're doing the right thing we have that transparency um and so these are the the pieces that we're evaluating. Sorry to interrupt. No, yeah. I, I think I was. Oh. Right on. Yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, I mean, I'm all in favor of oversight and accountability. Those are excellent um, goals and, and we need that for sure. I would just have my final comment that it would be wonderful to ensure we don't have competing proposals in Fund 7 that are doing similar things, you know, trying to, to do similar things. Sure. And, and, and definitely we felt kind of the, the timeline and we needed to make things happen quickly and we may have duplicate proposals and perhaps we can uh, kill one of them if, if there's, you know, already duplicates that are there. Uh, but this is the, the level that we you know, are, are looking to, to do reviews of and, and making sure that we have that accountability. And this is uh, a concept that, you know, Dora would like to sort of work on specifically and maybe we just align with the right groups. It sounds like we definitely need to have an offline meeting to continue this conversation. Does somebody want to take an action item to set that up and um, invite people to that? Yes, uh, I can do that with Harris or... And okay. Yeah. yeah, please, uh, Thank you. myself, and, and uh, let's include Dor in that as well. And cool. I just wanted to throw in a comment about the, the improvements body. I do love the thought of us having um, a learning organization that kind of does the reflection and improvements through that reflective process. And I think that was on a previous slide that this body would do run retrospectives or something like that. Um, so. That's also something that the admin team has been doing historically. So we can discuss whether that's an admin team function or this group. Um, and maybe it's simpler to keep this just with oversight and accountability and then have the, the re re retrospective and improvement side kind of part of the admin team, but totally flexible on how we kind of figure that out. I just yeah, don't want multiple organizations, again, duplicating work and doing multiple retrospectives. And, and Agreed. fatiguing people on the retrospective side. <laughs> so I'll I will um, you know just make a, a brief mention. So the the fund six community feedback we did receive. Uh, you know, Danny sent that out really from from Catalyst to to the community. We've processed some of that feedback. 
I have shared in the Slack, you know, the, the details of uh, what that feedback was. So if you're interested in the raw data, it's there. Um, the only thing we're taking out is the emails, uh, just so we're not sharing that more openly, um, you know, and, you know, hindering someone's privacy. So that, that's the only uh, thing. And I know that there's other, other initiatives to send additional surveys. And Allison, I know you've been championing uh, some of that. So that's great. So we, again, this is another overlap where we need to sort of figure out how that should be done. And our objective is to have this to be community driven. Uh, but we do have some, some insights uh, from this. We're going to continue to do a deeper analysis of that. And I'll, I'll uh, share that separately. And, and it's actually in this presentation, which uh, you folks already have access to. Um, but I'll, I'll stop my topics here and let the rest of the meeting resume. Thanks, Harris. Really fascinating topics. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of conversation around that. Um, and I do encourage everybody to engage on the Slack side um, to continue the conversations and make that an active space where we can work together between meetings um, since the cadence is every two weeks. Um, all right, Jonathan, do you want to go back to sharing your screen? Um, the next stop thing up is KPI reporting for CC funded proposals. Um, and the one funded proposal so far is power up the catalyst circle. Um, and for that, there's a number of things that need to be done on a regular cadence, which is uh, the KPIs reporting and then the, the reporting at the, the cohort meeting or the coordinator meeting on progress and updates. Um, so we, we have another month for the KPI, so we don't have to decide them today. I pasted the KPIs that were from the actual proposal itself, um, and we're gonna have to have some mechanism to gauge how we're doing with each one. And then maybe at the, the coordinator meeting, we have a short report from each of the people, or we can summarize what's happened in the meetings, but um, we can definitely have this conversation in Slack because it's not time pressing yet. Um, I went ahead and just submitted something last night because it was due um, as a placeholder, but I made a note that we'd be updating our KPIs and putting in a fuller report next time. Thanks, Nori, for doing that and meeting that deadline. I'm certainly sure. willing to help with whatever needs to be done and I'll I'll participate in Slack. Okay, we'll take that to Slack and then uh, we don't have to take up more time here. Uh, the next one is the proposal submission, preferred option to submit either as individuals or as the Catalyst Circle V2. Um, who, I, I think I actually... So I put that in, this is Jonathan. Um, so I, I put that in just because I was submitting a bunch of the proposals in as to get the drafts in and I was unsure. <laughs> so I was like, do you want to add names and all this? So I just kept it as the login email, but I thought um, that may be something you want to discuss, but yeah, just how you guys want to go forward because personally, I think, you know, the CC gives a weight to it, but it's not about me. Yeah, no, actually I thought I submitted the, <laughs> the action yeah. item because I had the same question. <laughs> Me too. Uh, which yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> Go on, Alison. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I think CC proposals do have some weight to them. And there's a lot of ideas I have, and I've submitted various proposals. Um, but I also think we should be careful that the CC doesn't become a platform for us using it to champion the particular things that we're focused on. So I would be interested for group discussion around what defines a CC sponsored proposal. And actually just along those lines, maybe this is a good time to mention, I threw in a proposal this morning at the last minute because I thought that CCV1 mentors should be compensated for the time they've spent working on the transition, which wasn't really included in the, the original scope. And then as long as I was doing that, I figured we should put in some funding for CCV2 to be mentors for CCV3. So that's in there under my name. 
Yeah, I think they are quite related to CC and the, uh, uh, they, they are a nice way to show that community if they care and they, they think that this that this should happen, they, then it will be voted. And if it's not, then we will see the feedback and, and the community understanding. Okay, it was retrospective. We don't do like that. You have great calls. We don't play for random stuff. And that's, that's, I think it's fine. But I do what you just said before. I'm, I totally agree. And I also add one link, uh, it's not, it's not directly under here. It is on a different agenda. I think I copy pasted it down there. Is that I always had had an issue with the uh, voting uh, model. It's what is being used for the catalyst circle. And so there is a, like a proposal to move it to the blockchain. Uh, but yeah, again, that's another question. Is it because it's the voting is happening on the platform, what the, on the tool, what our team is developing, and is it now? Should it be somehow be in, in included here, even though it's directly related to Catalyst Circle? Yes. Matthias. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think going forward, I think the main proposal would be the catalyst circle if uh, council and admin support the proposal, even just the name, I guess, as long as nobody uh, opposes the proposal as being part of the catalyst circle proposal, I think CC uh, or the catalyst circle should be the pro main proposer. Yeah, I just wanted to. I mean, I just wanted to request that we request in circle meetings that the proposal be proposed by Catalyst Circle, and if no one objects, we can we, we agree. So all the proposals that are listed here, I put in a couple of placeholders for Harris as well. I'd like them, my name taken off them, and put uh, and actually Catalyst Circle put us the proposal. There's a flip. You could argue that that gives a stamp of authority, but also it gives the community an opportunity to comment on Catalyst Circle, and also for voters to vote on the, the general voters on the uh, the wallet voters. I mean, to vote on Catalyst Circle as well. So there's that side of it, a reputational side of it. But I would support deciding in this meeting which proposal should be um, proposed by Catalyst Circle. Thanks, Harris. Yeah, I was just going to uh, just comment, you know, certainly uh, I love the notion of moving things to a blockchain for, for voting, um, but I, and, and I'm a huge technology enthusiast and I wanna see everything on the blockchain. But well, we need to make the right decision. Like, okay, is it good enough to use a Google form? Is it good enough to do this or that? Um, so we we need to if constantly evaluate. Um, you know, when when do we put it on the blockchain? Um, so it's certainly something I'm a huge fan of and would support it. Uh, you know, if we have enough of a pain point where other systems aren't working, um, so just a consideration. Um, as a suggestion, not to take up more time in this meeting, but we do have a Slack channel for Fund 7 proposals, and we can list all the ones that we want to put up for consideration, and then maybe if everyone can go through and put a green check mark on the ones that you approve, then we can go ahead and update the ones there, because we have two weeks, so we don't have to rush through it today. Yep. Um just Jonathan or, or Nori, can you link to the Word document so I can help you to drag stuff around what I know what I could? Yes. Yeah, so I'm doing my best to capture it all, guys. <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a typing machine, Jonathan. All right. You're doing great. And one one thing, if I could request, maybe we create a Slack channel for uh, kind of that catalyst parameters uh, discussion, and maybe we can have a, a round of a flurry of feedback back and forth in that channel. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I uh, yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, are we okay to move on to the Catalyst Coordinator Representative proposal? Is that part of the conversation we just had? So all, all this things. right here is the repeat, right, of what we just had, I think? Okay. The thing I have to add, add to that is two and three, again, I'm just repeating it, are the placeholder proposals that are under my name. So we're, we're going to take that to Slack as was actions just above. Um, yeah, and, I'll, and I'll, I can move these links up to, to yeah, where we yeah, discussed them earlier. Yeah, sure. I, I pasted Actually, the, go, on. Yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I just pasted in the idea scale link. So, yeah, they're pretty easy to reference. Just quickly on the Catalyst Coordinator proposals, those two are. I can also take to a Slack discussion if you want to save time in this meeting. The only questions there really are to, for those two proposals, audit circle, which may actually have a relationship with the uh, proposal two above anyway, um, and the catalyst coordinator hub, should they be proposed by a catalyst circle really. So, but we can take that to Slack. Yeah, and, and while he's typing, I just had a quick question, maybe mostly for Harris. One of the things I'd like to do is not a voter survey, but a voting survey with the ambitious target of reaching a statistically significant percentage of all potential voters. Um, so that's a proposal that I would discuss in our Slack channel, unless Harris, you think we maybe need to have a discussion about surveys and feedback gathering to make sure we're not duplicating efforts. Um, yeah, no, I, I wanna make sure I, I understood um, your point. So we're, you're trying to reach the people that are not voting, is that correct? Well, yes, because we don't, we have, when you look at it in terms, we have great turnout. I'm, I think it's super impressive how much energy there is around catalyst voting. But I also think there's a broad section of ADA holders and wallets that are not voting. So I, my goal would be to use the format of an incentivized survey that we, we piloted with Fund 6 to try to reach what we're calling a statistically significant segment of voters, which of course needs, that'd be part of the work would be to define what that is. But again, I'm mindful of the fact that IOG and is gathering feedback as well. Do we need to um, coordinate or can I just post the proposal and my ideas in Slack and we can vote on it, uh, come to consensus like we just dis discussed. Yeah, no, I certainly applaud the, the effort and, and I, I think we need to, you know, get more people to participate because we have a pretty low percentage of, of yeah. ADA voters or ADA holders that are, are not voting and, and certainly our entire um, emphasis is to try to get more and more folks involved in that that voting process so um yeah let's maybe take that into into slack um and our objective is to have these surveys driven by the community so maybe you're al already spearheading that so um we should definitely remove the the duplication and you know there's certainly other things uh that you know danny and and some of the the key folks within uh our project catalyst uh, you know, if that's handled by by the community and we are getting the checks and balances that we knew, like, hey, is this really working or not, um, which is part of the data uh, that we are, you know, the questions we're asking, uh, as long as those are, are covered, then it can be managed by the community in my, in my view. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Any other conversation or comments on the proposal side of things before we take it to Slack? Just one point is uh, I'd ask all members to put in proposals to, to remind that we, the community will get a, um, an opportunity to comment on the, these are proposals. Um, they will be also um, looked at by community advisors. So whoever owns these, and, and if they're proposed by Catalyst Circle, we all own them. <laughs> Um, so we kind of have to respond to the community advisors and we have to respond to the community and know what we're proposing. And um, yeah, so that's my point. It's about 
accountability, essentially. Matthias? Um, on that note, um, I'm a little bit concerned um, in terms of legitimacy. And uh, because in the previous meeting, it was pointed out by uh, Victor and myself were to reach certain community members that we have uh, engaged with in, and I have not seen any indication that those um, that this advice was taken into consideration. So um, since it's a public channel, there was no active engagement. Maybe there were side conversation, but we don't know. And that is something that is that I just wanted to speak up um, that it's problematic if we do not engage with the community that we are representing. Uh, that does not apply to any of us that are here, but um, yeah. Can you give a specific example of what a good outcome would have looked like for you? Um, just, you know, the, the, the con seeing conversation, uh, whether that be uh, Telegram or Discord or where, wherever those folks are there. Um, I mean, Alison put herself really out there on a scary place uh, called Twitter. Um, and so I think as someone who is, who already has a platform within Catalyst and, you know, in Town Hall and whatnot, the, the yes, there are in every group, there are some people that you just cannot chime with. But what, what I would have liked to see is engagement. Like, hey, I'm a new Catalyst representative and show an effort to understand and make yourself accessible. I really like the idea of Allison's office hours. Um, and yeah, I, I've not seen any indication that uh, this effort is being taken seriously yet. Thanks for that. I, I, I have a very comment on that, Matthias. I presented a slide at Town Hall asking for feedback and published as an email address. And yeah, you know, so, you know, so I suppose we need to consider how we can do that. I'm not sure it doesn't exist, I'm sure. For I will use. Oh, go ahead, Eva. Uh, if I may speak, one of my biggest weaknesses is that I don't um, really go out there in random platforms uh, to to say things and to pro. But is there a possibility that admin work, admin like the facilitators could help to when I prepare some kind of um, like a callback or, or like an onboarding message or like invite that there is a body where I can say, hey, publish this, and then it's put out in a different platforms. So I don't, um, so yeah, would, would it be possible or, or Matthias, it, I should be the one who goes everywhere on all these platforms and, and makes myself visible. Yeah, to, to answer that. So um, just to clarify, um, I mean, I, I personally think you make yourself accessible. And I mean, you, you're at Town Hall all the time, you have uh, workshops, and I see also activity on Discord. And I, I think it's a great, great uh, idea to have to utilize maybe the admin teams. I, I'm not suggesting who should do the work here, but you know, like you pointed out, that is something that you're not great, great at. And maybe we have certain platforms that, you know, some other community members or other circle members, whether that council or admin, have more access to. For example, I'm terrible with Reddit. That's a place that I'm not yet uh, active on. Um, so I, I, I take that suggestion, and I, I think that's that's maybe we should discuss that um, in, in Slack how we can signal that we are really really accessible. Because to me, yes, given a private email, that's great. But the, the problem is visibility and legitimacy is, if it's yes, private, it's... Um, I mean, I, I don't want to suggest, um, but this is happening. But um, what I've heard from 
other members in my community and my specific community that I'm representing right now, um, there is concerns that some people want to become essentially catalyst superstars. Um, and that's fine. As long as you do the work, I don't have a problem with it. But if you do not signal that you're actually working on this, and I think it's important to put it out there early on, because the Cardano Foundation was the same way, like they just didn't show up, right? So I, I'm taking this very serious that, you know, we, we should do the work. And I think all of us, especially as we later on, discuss extending the circle. So I just wanted to make sure that we really have to work on accountability and legitimacy. And maybe as Tivo suggested, utilize uh, our fellow uh, team members really and um, make, make us more accessible. If we yeah. have something. I'm picking up on what you're saying, Matthias. I mean, I, I forgot to mention actually in the preamble that um, Alison and myself went also to Eastern Town Hall. Um, and it, it's, it's also, we don't, I mean, I should have, we should have mentioned that so that we're all aware of what each other's doing. But we can't always be aware of what each other's doing all the time. And each of us, I think, in this group are very active in the community and speaking to different people in different, in different sections all the time. So I'll take exception, that's why I took exception to your initial statement, no effort's been made. It's not just about publishing a slide. You know, we engage in after town halls and Eastern Town Hall um, and on different platforms like with Alison on Twitter, you know, for, since in the last two weeks quite actively. So I, I just wouldn't agree with your statement, um, frankly. Should, should I point out the name because maybe there's, there's a misconception here? <laughs> can, I'm going to chat you in private. Okay. And maybe we can t create a Slack channel around legitimacy and outreach just so that we can share ideas and have a deeper conversation around some next actions on this. Uh, Raymond and then Allison. Yeah, just a, a little bit of reflection. Um, coming from an experience I had, I, I used to be a high school teacher. I was a computer math science teacher uh, for a few years. And one of the things that they would do at the end of the year is they'd get all these teachers together. And this wasn't a normal school. This is a, a public charter school with, with a project-based curriculum. Um, and so the teachers were more like advisors. And we were responsible for uh, engaging students helping them to initiate projects um, and get feedback from their student body community and get them to really initiate new ideas and projects and learn how to actually do that. What was interesting about that experience was um, the, the, the feedback loop that happened at the end of the year. The teachers would all get together and each teacher would have like a portfolio of actions that they had taken, presentations that they had made, feedback from the students themselves. And they would actually essentially be scored. It was like an accountability circle where we got to find out from other teachers what they thought of our performance as, as, as a teacher, as an advisor. So it's kind of something maybe like along those lines, you might want to think about having some kind of an interesting um, feedback loop closure system within the Catalyst Circle that kind of gives us all a report card of how we did according to our ambitions, our outcomes, um, what we achieved, what we didn't, where, what our strengths were, what our weaknesses were, and, and it's, you know, something that kind of puts more traction around that accountability measure just wanted to put that out there it was an interesting experience i learned a lot about myself and the other teachers and i used it to improve myself as a teacher thanks that's a really interesting idea i know a lot of companies and professional organizations use similar feedback mechanisms or 360 feedbacks to help people develop and grow that might be a really interesting thing to pursue um allison it, just a quick comment on social media platforms. Uh, TiVo gave me an idea, which is that we probably we all have different networks and we're all on different platforms. So I am rather active on Twitter. I don't even have a Reddit account. Maybe in our Slack channel, we could have a please share space where we each post announcements that we would like the others to amplify across their networks. So I'd be happy to post, you know, TiVo's proposal workshops to my Twitter network and maybe someone else could post 
my office hours in their Reddit channel, or we just have some kind of, you know, please amplify space. If that's a good idea. Yeah, I love that idea. Um, and also just as a reminder, yeah. we do have town hall slides every week, and that's a great place for you to get FaceTime with your communities. So please do take advantage. And even if it's just a short update, it'd be great to have each of you presenting a little bit of something at town hall um, and um, being seen there. And then the other thing that I was thinking is we should probably create a single list of each of you, the communities represent, and how best to get a hold of you if somebody wants to know, because um, that information might be pretty well scattered right now. And it might be nice to have a catalyst circle page that somebody could land on. And if they need to talk to Allison, here's the, her favorite way, or here's the Discord handle, or here's the Telegram handle, or here's the email. All right, any other comments here? We will now have a, another Slack channel so we can discuss things. Um, moving forward. And thanks, Matthias. I think it's really important to call out things whenever you detect something might be going sideways or something is not meeting your expectations. So it's good to have that conversation. Um, yeah, and, and please, if anyone still has any confusion or still feels personally attacked, please please reach out to me. Um, it could have been a little bit more clear, but um, it would have been bad, bad. Uh, bad action right now with the situation so thank you thank you uh next topic is alternatives to the inaccessible catalyst prioritized problems trello board uh steven you have some ideas there yeah essentially i mean a trello board is just a kanban board it's based on something called that which was designed moving cards across the board um i'm just suggesting doing that on a github project board um would it be difficult to use no um because a lot of the times we were screen sharing the trello board so it only requires a couple of admin members who I'm sure can learn, or know, or if they don't know already, how to use a GitHub project board to move cards across. Um, so really it's just a, a very simple suggestion. It's also open source. Um, a GitHub project board can be commented on by anyone who registered for a GitHub account um, and uh, forked and copied by anyone who has a GitHub account as well. Whereas Trello is a proprietary tool um, where the data is locked in it, um, there's that argument as well. So it's really just quite a simple suggestion, but um, so I'll be welcome any suggestions or counter arguments to that. <laughs> I have a, just a quick, I mean, my, my own experience with GitHub um it is there the, the, the cool thing about trail that i've seen so far is that it's visual um and you can you know block things out and have a flow and all that does github have something like that does this could this github make it possible to have a visual flow the way that yeah. Trello does yeah, yeah. If Jonathan, not, can, can you click can, on that first link there yeah. yeah that's the github board it doesn't look that much different from a trello board Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you take one of those cards, uh, Jonathan, and move them across, you can move them across. We need uh, the right he permissions. Needs to do that. He needs access, yeah. I could, I could, you need permission to move them across. So. But yeah, so it's essentially identical. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I, I would definitely highly suggest moving to GitHub then if you have that kind of visual power. Um, it, it, I think it'll help central, you know what I mean? Like at this point, it, it, and, and this is just a quick question to everybody. Are, are we all on board with Slack being our primary tool of communication at this point? Is, is, is this where we're, we're, we're putting most of our efforts in communication with each other? Right, it's Slack, okay. Um, yeah, I personally, I, I always like to see the, the best tools being used. But I, I also don't like to see too many tools being used. 
right? It scatters and makes things more difficult. Um, and so where a lot of us probably already have experience with GitHub and GitHub is also, you know, the platform that's being used by IOG for their development, by a lot of SPOs uh, for their own tool building and maintaining. Um, I think it could be a really a cool place, at least for the SBO community, I can speak for them. Yeah, and if, if, also, if all circle members, if they don't have a GitHub account, if they could register for a GitHub account, I'm quite happy to work with any circle member to guide them through basic uses of GitHub for this um, as well. So, uh, but really all it is is just transferring a Kanban board to a GitHub project board. That's all it is. Cool. I, I would second moving that yeah. to, uh, to GitHub. Awesome. Yes, all their votes. No <laughs> objections. Go ahead, Eva. <laughs> I just said we got all the votes. Majority voting already worked before Harris <laughs> even opened his mind. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of thumbs up. So, okay, we'll, we'll officially move to GitHub um, boards for doing this rather than Trello. Um, and thank you, Stephen, for offering this training. I know there's a lot of people on the admin team as well who don't know Git very well. And if we could arrange something around that open source training on how to use Git effectively and how to use the, this board, that might be really great to set something up because I think there's a lot of people that want to learn how to use it. Yeah, sure. I can, I can as, as liaison with admin, I'm quite happy to do that given scheduling and time. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And, Thank you. Maybe record it for others to, to see it. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Um, and then we have 10 minutes left and two topics. Um, there's mapping. Uh, I will take the circle members first because okay. uh, I think we can get it over with fast because we okay. have this uh, offline um, governance uh, discussion. I think it's quite re relevant there and we could bring these up like what what kind of seats we need and uh, the, the one what harris was talking about so perhaps all of these things could move to that uh, offline topic and then uh, with the results come with the result from that workshop come to next circle meeting and then pretty much present what what the outcome were if if the, if harris and uh, stephen who agreed to have the off offline chat uh, also feel it's it, it makes sense. Are you talking about the mapping ecosystems tools? No, the circle no. members. How should we expand the circle? Yeah. Matthias? Yeah, we, we already have some um, consent, essentially, on the topic of Imorgo, at least. Um, so we would be ready to vote. So uh, just to make sure, like we um, we want to make sure we have right representation for Catalyst specifically, right, as a Catalyst circle and not necessarily Cardano um, as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. so as long as there's relevancy for for Catalyst, then it makes sense. Uh, okay. That's so great. the presentation you talked before wasn't really related to Catalyst circle. Because I thought this, like um, you said, like two different circles and how the governance works, it, then it really matters how how big or expanded the circle itself is and how fast the seats move and are added. Yeah. So so initially, you know, uh, every everything is leading into the larger picture, uh, in my view, but the. Uh, the initial focus of the circle has been on Catalyst itself and spurring the ecosystem of Catalyst and innovation. Yeah, and I, about Emergo, I mean, we did have a lot of discussion in Slack. I, I will just say, 
I'm not completely sure of the history behind why Amergo wasn't in the first circle. Maybe it doesn't matter, but certainly as long as I've been around Cardano, there have been a discussion of the three entities that are custodians of the Cardano ecosystem for now, Cardano Foundation, Emergo, and IO. So it seems to me logical that Emergo would be included in the circle, but I also think it, it raises a question as the Cardano ecosystem grows and there are more and more entities that are serving as custodians of various parts of the ecosystem and for profit and not for profit and community groups, what the criteria is for having a seat in the circle. Just to reiterate like Harris's point, this is the catalyst circle, not the Cardano circle. So it would all my question would be how much does Emergo participate in the catalyst process and have input into that? And, um, if it's relevant, then it would totally make sense. What is uh, by that that would finish and I shouldn't be here. As a representative of the Cardano Foundation, at least. Um, now, if we now we just finally began to extend the idea of the Cardano Foundation to non-employees of the Cardano Foundation as ambassadors and whatnot, and there's obviously some internal restructuring as well, what it means to be an ambassador, etc. But by that definition, the Cardano Foundation should be there, really. Is that true? Like, what has the Cardano Foundation, like from from my perspective as a voter, community advisor, veteran community advisor, and now funded proposer? What has the Cardano Foundation done? It's an interesting question. I always thought the Cardano Foundation controlled the treasury that Catalyst is funded from. So but there's a lot of people within the Cardano Foundation that I spoke about that have very limited knowledge about Catalyst in the first place. So. Yeah. I, yeah, and that's a question that I had actually going back to the lobbying issue. Who controls the Cardano Treasury? IOG. Only? Mm -hmm. It's IOG right now. Oh, I have for, been for sure. uh, putting thought then. <laughs> I thought always it's more Morocco, Cardano Foundation, and IOG. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe it's only IOG, but. Um... Yeah, I, I, there's definitely, if we need to clarify, we can. Yeah. It definitely sounds like this would... is a deeper conversation than yeah. a few minutes <laughs> we have left for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. uh, on, on the uh, Emergo issue, I, I didn't quite follow the all the chat in Slack, but wasn't there a conclusion that someone specifically would represent Emergo TV? The, that... Yes, there was. Uh, I think it was Kurta Sakis or something similar. Uh, however, I'm not sure what about the consent because I still don't understand why should uh, next week or ne in the two weeks when Morgo already hop in here. I like the idea of somebody saying that uh, they, we shouldn't have like a representative about Morgo, but more of like voter tools or education and which what one of these they would represent. And that would make more sense. Uh, okay. Yes, Raymond. Uh, yeah, Raymond. And then we should probably wrap this up and take it offline to continue okay. the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, in, in everything that I've seen from Emergo, um, I would I I would vote against having them come into this version of the circle. And instead, I uh, asked them to really clarify what their leadership is doing, what is happening internally with their development team, and what position they really have in this ecosystem right now. I think there's been a lot of question about that. At least uh, a lot of my SBO community is very curious about what happened to Emergo, especially when a lot of the, the devs went over to DC Spark and we saw a lot of problems with Heroi. So I would like to see Emergo kind of step up a bit and show us who they are today. I think there's a question about that. Um, and then we can decide whether or not they belong in this catalyst circle in future generations. Yeah, maybe it's DC Spark that needs the seat. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like, at what point do you decide who, you know, who, who these, these ecosystem partners are going to be, right? And how many of them, how many of them can we have in this catalyst circle before we, we dilute the effectiveness of the circle because there's too many people in it, right? 
Um, so I think that is a big thing too. Uh, we saw that with Spakra and when we decided on the size of the board, you know, we chose seven for a reason um, because we knew too many would just take too long to deliberate and too few wouldn't be representative. So there is a sweet spot somewhere and the question is, where is that? And so I think we need more time before admitting you know, someone else into this version anyways. Yeah, okay. it's, an it's an interesting subject. Like re representation shouldn't be for the sake of representation. There should be some sort of capability in some people and some sort of self-definition. And so Matthias has touched on that with the Cardano Foundation as well. I think we've got a similar issue here with Emergo. So we, we need, we'll not only need to say we're representing someone, but we're bringing something to the table as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all very good points. Uh, let's wrap this up. It looks like we do definitely need to take this into further conversations and we yep. can do it over Slack, but it looks like we're not ready to bring them in. No, um, can I steal that one minute? <laughs> Just to, to yeah. uh, have that, um, the last topic, I will, and I'm making an action item pretty much for myself. So um, I will repost and like tag everybody in the Slack to, to check that proposal. It's not long. It will take you two minutes to go through. And, and what I want is pretty much like, a, like a agreement or disagreement that should we do this collectively? There is pretty much a, an idea of creating a form and every representative shares it in, in their network, like Alison said before, uh, to, to gather tooling information people use and and then the question is like do we actually need that information so and if you do think it's valuable then the next section would be to spread that form i thank you for that minute okay. all right thanks Devo. uh we're right at time let's wrap this up really quick um any I like to do closing thoughts just to get people's um, where they're at now from if it changed from where we started. So let's stick at some closing uh, words from Matthias and then Alice. Um, yeah, excited for the changes that we'll uh, agree on over the next few months and uh, looking forward to where this is going. I think there will be some interesting discussions and some tension here and there. And I think that's a good thing because we can I think we are capable of resolving those tensions and uh, make uh, be all on the same page going forward. Okay, Allison and then Stephen. Yeah, I started the meeting feeling very thankful and I'm leaving it feeling even more thankful. And I'll just say that I'm grateful to all of you that I feel like I can be very real and very honest and very open and share my thoughts and questions candidly and that um, is a very special experience to have, especially when we haven't been working together for very long. So I, th I thank you very much for this community and space. Thanks, Alison. Stephen, and then uh, Megan. Yeah, lots of rich material discussed at this meeting, a lot of food for thought, and I really like the emphasis from everyone on collaborative collaboration um, and collaborative solutions. Uh, Megan and then Harris. Yep, I just want to say thanks again for you know letting me sit in here today. Um, I had to turn my camera off. I lost power for a little bit in there, and then I got internet back, but no lights. Um, but it's been really, really mind opening to listen in here today. And thanks for letting me be here. Thanks, Megan. Uh, Harris and then Raymond. Great. Yeah, I definitely appreciate everyone's time and dedication to this. And I, I know we're all have our hearts in the right place. And, you know, I'm definitely thankful to have the lively discussion. And, you know, certainly we uh, need to think very hard about these hard problems of governance and how we move forward together. So I'm just grateful that there's a level of trust within this group. And, you know, I look forward to our continued collaboration. Awesome. Uh, Raymond and Tifo. Yeah, I want to echo Allison's words and the gratitude I came in with and the gratitude I feel. And I think also it's probably a good idea that I open up some office hours. Um, so I'll probably going to put that out there as well. And um, yeah, a lot of this got my noodle cooking. Um, I, I'm going to start talking a little bit about it in the Slack channel with you guys, see what you think. But I definitely had a far out vision about this this whole governance process we're in curious what you guys think no thanks for that and happy thanksgiving guys thanks for showing up today 
Thanks, uh, Tivo, and then JP. I'm the type of guy who listens a lot of progressive house and progressive trance, and this is my <laughs> this is one type of progressive jam I like from this me uh, meeting. Beautiful. Uh, JP, and then I'll yep. finish it up. Uh, thanks, guys. So I will do some edits on this because I wasn't really editing as I went or I was trying to, but uh, I will share it as well. Um, and then I, I'm just for next, I might make some adjustments to the template so I can do it faster and easier. <laughs> uh, but thanks, really good. And if anything, um, sorry, if anything is not reflected in the exact way or in the way that you want it reflected, um, when I share it, please feel free to go in and, and make the edits before we share it widely. Awesome. Thanks, JP. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for showing up today um, and the Americans taking time out from Thanksgiving and showing up, as Allison said, uh, with open hearts and minds. I think you're all gelling together very well. And I really appreciate that you're able to lean into some of the more difficult conversations as well without any fear. And I think that's a sign of a very healthy group. Um, and yeah, so I really appreciate everyone's enthusiasm, energy, and just showing up and being present for two hours. Uh, thanks for your time. And uh, we can wrap it up here and enjoy the rest of your days, mornings, evenings, wherever you might be. And thank you for showing up. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great thanks day. Everyone. Thank you, thanks, everybody. Um, recording stop. Now.